So what is Schengen? It's really important that we cover this topic because we're here in the Azores and it affects everybody who wants to travel to Europe for an extended period of time. So it's greatly affecting us right now. It's been a huge headache and if we had known about it before we got here, it would have been a little easier to handle. But the thing is that most U.S. citizens don't know what Schengen is and we were in that category. Yeah, when we got here, the customs agents started talking about Schengen. We had no idea what he was talking about, and it's an important law that really applies to us. Yeah, so we're going to tell you what it is and our experience with dealing with it. Um, so Schengen is a kind of interesting name. You wouldn't expect that. It's actually the place where this treaty was signed in 1985. Yeah, so it's called the Schengen Agreement, and it's pretty much the idea when you hear about the EU with the European Union, how it's the borderless and you can travel between one country or another, no problems at all. Well, that's actually not the EU, that's Schengen. <laughs> so yeah. Schengen is the region in Europe that you are able to travel without any problems. It's the whole borderless economy that the plan of the EU was. That is Schengen. So it's 20-some countries of Europe. Not all the countries that are in the EU participate in Schengen, and it, it gets kind of <laughs> muddled from there. It's really confusing. The basic part of Schengen is you get 90 days, no questions asked, in a 180 day period. So if you're coming here for a two week vacation, have a great time, enjoy yourself, you go back to the States, you never even had to worry about Schengen. You come here on a boat and you're going to be here for a while, you got some problems. As cruisers, we ended up um, being in Schengen for more than 90 days. And the way that we are handling that, we've had to talk to multiple people about it and get many different opinions. Um, what we are doing is we're ending up with a residency visa. Yes, yeah, so we're getting Portuguese residency. Mm -hmm. It allows yeah. you constant access to all of the region, all of the Schengen region. Well, sort of. <laughs> we don't actually know that yet. So we've we've asked a bunch of different customs agents. The, the custom agents here, they're called CEF agents. The one who's in charge of the stuff, who I feel she has the best grasp on what's going on, she says that with residency, and with Portuguese residency, you are then a resident of Schengen and allowed to travel through Schengen with no problems at all. Right. And so that's what the information that we are choosing to believe. Yes. <laughs> Other people, like at the airport, say, nope, they... You can't get residency as a foreign citizen, which that one I just threw out. And then the consulate told us that she doesn't understand Schengen at all. <laughs> that was the consulate <laughs> in Washington, D.C. The Portuguese at The consulate. Portuguese embassy. Yeah. We so, were like, we were asking, <laughs> what do we apply for in order to travel throughout Schengen? And she was like, I don't know about Schengen. Yeah, it's, <laughs> she didn't know that one. Yeah, uh, so that... <laughs> so what we're what we are realizing is... Depending on where you go and who you ask, you're going to get different opinions about Schengen. And some people just have no grasp on it whatsoever. And some people think they have a great grasp on it, but tell you something completely different from the last person. Yeah, so the whole 90 days and 180 day period, that sounds good. And it makes sense. So being how we got here in August, our 180 day period for the reset of the clock would be sometime February, March-ish. Mm -hmm. We came back in January and had no issues coming back into the country because according to at least the agents here on this island, January 1st resets your clock. Regardless they did not of where you say are. that that was the case when we asked in D.C. though. Yeah, so, in D.C. they'd never heard of that. Yeah. So it, so we were just like, like torn, like what is going on? So I thought, okay, if everyone who's enforcing Schengen has a different opinion of what Schengen is... Maybe those who punish you for violating Schengen would have a more uniform what's going on with it. So I started looking up, all right, what happens if you just overstay? So the general thing is you get a red stamp in your passport, you are exiled from all of Schengen, and you are uh, an illegal immigrant and that whole mess, and you're never coming back in. That, that's pretty much the basic part. So don't outstay your Schengen yeah, visa. <laughs> because you might think, oh, this is fine. I'll just slip out and no one's going to notice. The thing is, when you leave a Schengen country, they stamp you out. And then when you come back in, even if you're going from one port to the next, you get stamped out and stamped back in. So if you sail 
to a non-Schengen place because you overstayed, get stamped in. When you come back to a Schengen place, they're going to say you're missing the stamp out stamp and you're in trouble <laughs> now. So it, it's just don't do it. But the interesting part was how the laws are enforced or what the punishments are. So apparently in Germany, they will hunt you down and lock you up and then throw you out. In Italy, you pay a fine. Uh, here, well, at least here on this island, you say you're sorry, and then they give you an extension for your Schengen. Like, it's <laughs> very different depending on where you are. Uh, and then each country is different in how hard they enforce it. So apparently the Portuguese are known for being very, very relaxed with Schengen. Spain, who is their neighbor, not so relaxed. Apparently they run your numbers and make sure you haven't overstayed your 90 days every time you check in and out. We're doing what we can do now, which is get our residency visa in Portugal. Yeah, which we need that because we're here so long working on the boat, mm -hmm. so we kind of have to do that. And since we don't have it yet, but since that process is has been jump-started in the U.S. when we went back, um, it, then we're, we're, we're here legally, and if it takes longer than 90 days for it to come back, then we just apply for a, an extended traveler's visa. Yeah, so we already talked to the CEF agent when we got to the island and let her know the paperwork's in process. Mm -hmm. And she said, no worries. If you haven't heard back close to the 90 days, just come see her. And she'll just give us an extension yeah. with no issues. And um, so that's why we do recommend if you are trying to navigate Schengen and all of this mess, start in the Azores because we've heard that it's the easiest to get residency here and yeah. just deal for cruisers. MJ Sailing, we've been in contact with them because their boat is here in the Azores as well and they're dealing with Schengen by going to Thailand for 90, 90 days. days and so they're going to be doing the in and out 90 day periods. We can't really do that because we we have places we want to go in a, a shorter amount of time. Also, we're trying to refit the boat at the same time. Yeah, so... So we kind of have it, to be We couldn't here to really just yeah. run our way to Thailand, even though that sounds really amazing. It sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, another part that's really disheartening about getting your information on Schengen, the best information I've been given on Schengen is actually someone's blog post. <laughs> So, and this is, multiple people have told me, this is the place to check. It tells you all the forms you need, all the paperwork. Like, it is more concise and thorough than any of the government sites about Schengen. So we'll link to that blog post in the description down below. And the next episode that we put out on Sunday is actually going to detail our process in D.C. Uh, for getting our residency. But basically, we needed fingerprints. Um, FBI, FBI background, background check. checks. And it, it really, the process really did have to start in the U.S. Yeah. Um, which is part of the reason why we went home over Christmas, um, December and January. So it's been a process. It's been really frustrating because nobody seems to really know exactly what Schengen is or the laws, the specific laws of it. And so really what we can tell you to sum it up is that it's going to differ whoever you talk to, but as long as you have a basic grasp of it and you're prepared to deal with it before you get here, you're going to be a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, it won't be surprise. You have to be out of here in 90 days. <laughs> so so, so um, if you do have further questions that uh, we didn't go into... Or, or if you have information about Schengen, yes. <laughs> please... Let Please us know let us in the know. comments, um, or you can email us separately, but we'd love to hear exactly what you've heard about Schengen, um, any questions you might have, or just when you, if you cruised here, what, what was your process and how yeah. did you, how did you handle it? All right. Well, hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea about Schengen and let us know if there's anything else we can help you with. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.